I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. Let's start with the CPU performance. I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is that the CPU frame rates are really scalable. A mid-range CPU from 2019, like my R5 3600X, is not being CPU bottlenecked using CPU intensive settings while still reaching relatively high frame rates. And it appears there is still plenty of headroom available. The bad news is that there is noticeable stuttering, which is independent from the frame rates. This leads to really low 1% lows throughout the game. Now let's get into the settings, starting with the most impactful setting in terms of image quality, ray tracing. It doesn't have any quality options, instead it only toggles on or off, and turning it on affects multiple things. For example, it affects shading, which is especially noticeable on trees and foliage. It also affects reflections, rendering them much more accurately, and depending on the scene, it can either have a minimal or maximal impact on the image quality. In some scenes, I actually prefer the look of the game without ray tracing, and in some rare cases, it can introduce artifacting. But I'm being nitpicky with this scene. As for performance, it varies depending on the scene. I noticed a performance impact of as low as 10% and as high as 30%. As for super sampling, with it turned off, it can look unstable. Using TSR on normal quality, which is the highest quality, it looks a lot better, and it looks more stable. The game for some reason supports the outdated FSR 1.0, which obviously looks horrible. Thankfully, FSR 3.0 is also supported, which looks better but definitely isn't the best implementation. DLSS quality looks the best so far, unsurprisingly, and XESS looks just behind DLSS, with it being slightly less stable in this scene. Now let's compare how they perform in distant scenes. Native TXAA looks absolutely horrible. TSR normal is a big improvement. FSR 1.0, well, just look at it. FSR 3.0 has major stability issues. DLSS looks very similar to TSR. XESS looks a lot softer with lots of details being lost. Now for the final comparison. Image stability in motion. Native TXAA suffers from major trailing. TSR normal is a slight improvement, but it's still noticeable. FSR 1.0 looks without a doubt the worst so far. FSR 3.0's trailing looks much more sharp, which makes it even more noticeable than the others. Even though its trailing is a bit shorter, DLSS has the least noticeable trailing and even when slowing the footage down, it's very hard to notice. XESS looks very similar to DLSS, but isn't as good. Overall, in terms of image quality, DLSS looks the best in all scenarios, with TSR coming in second place. However, when looking at performance, it appears that TSR normal has much lower FPS than DLSS. If your GPU doesn't support DLSS, I recommend FSR 3.0 or use TSR if you don't mind losing a few frames to achieve a better image quality. Now for anti-aliasing, which ends up being redundant when using super sampling. Just keep this on TXAA and forget about it. The shadows quality setting has a very small impact to the shadows, but comes at a significant performance cost even more costly than ray tracing. It only affects the shadows that are cast by light sources, 
low and medium look the same, and high offers slightly sharper shadows. In most scenes, it doesn't even do anything, but it will still eat your FPS regardless. It's only rarely where you can see traditional shadow casting lights in this game, as the game's design minimizes their use. So keep this on low for a huge FPS increase. The texture's quality setting doesn't appear to affect texture resolution, or the game simply ignores this setting and uses whatever it thinks is best for your system and VRAM. It also controls anisotropic filtering. The FPS cost is negligible, so keep this setting on high. The shader's quality setting affects multiple things. Going from low to medium enables transparency effects on objects and especially vehicle windows. High barely looks any better in this scene, but when looking at the forest for example, low and medium look the same, while high enables shading on foliage and trees. High comes with a noticeable performance impact. I recommend to use medium and if you have spare performance, use high. The effects quality setting also controls multiple things. First, it controls the quality of transparent materials, such as windows, correctly applying the attributes that a real window would have in real life. Each option gradually improves image quality. I also found that going from medium to high applies depth of field in the distance, which blends really well with the fog. This effect is used all throughout the game in the open areas, which I think looks nice. As for performance, it's negligible, so keep this setting on high. The separate translucency setting doesn't appear to make any difference in terms of image quality or performance. Either the impact is unnoticeable or the setting is broken. The lens flare setting is very subtle and is very hard to tell the difference between the options since it can't be turned off. Going from low to medium has a small difference, while high looks the same and performance doesn't seem to be impacted, so use high. SSAO has a very subtle impact to the image quality. In most scenes, I found it very hard to tell whether it was turned on or off. This indoor scene shows the difference a little better, and thankfully, the performance impact is very small, so keep SSAO turned on. Screen space reflections have a subtle and limited impact to the reflections, as most reflections are handled through ray tracing. In terms of performance, it's negligible, so keep it turned on. The subsurface scattering quality setting offers a low and a high option. It can't be turned off. I couldn't find any difference in image quality or performance. I tested multiple scenes, examined characters' faces and skin, and I also looked at transparent objects like windows and how they interacted with lights, and I still couldn't see any difference between low and high. The difference is unnoticeable, or the setting just doesn't work. The Global Motion Blur setting is basically another name for Per Object Motion Blur. It looks nice, and it doesn't appear to have a performance impact. The In-Game Motion Blur setting 
controls the camera and movement-based motion blur. It also doesn't seem to affect performance noticeably. One of the most intensive areas is right where you start the game. Here, the game at native 1440p with TXAA on max settings averages around 14 to 19 FPS. Using the optimized settings while still at native 1440p increased the average FPS to the 40s, over doubling the FPS right here, mainly because of disabling ray tracing and turning down the shadows and shader quality settings. And when using DLSS quality, it increased frame rates by another 10 FPS on average. The most impressive thing is now the 1% low FPS are consistently over 30 FPS. The game still stutters no matter what you do, but at least they are now more bearable. Overall, the game is a bit more GPU demanding than it looks with only a few settings that scale performance notably. The game is light on the CPU, but suffers from stuttering and hitching throughout the game. Mostly traversal stutter in my experience. What do you guys think?